Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Megan Tennant and today we are talking about one of my absolute favorite things in the world. The thing that I do when I should be writing or editing or any of the other stages of writing and that is world building. Sometimes I'm like a whisper in a Any further, huge shout out and thank you to Zenita. Zenita is one of my patrons. She has been a long time supporter there from like the beginning. And on Patreon, there is a monthly suggestion box and she made the request of a world building topic. Go check her out. I will link her channel in the description down below as well as her Twitter. And if you want a video dedicated to you, Patreon, clockandchronicles.com slash Patreon.com slash Cloud Kitten Chronicles. I know how to word. You'd be a fire kitten, a snow kitten, a lovely space kitten. No one's been brave enough to try that one yet. On to the topic, world building. Let's talk about it. So you guys probably already know world building is hugely important. It can easily make or break a sci-fi or fantasy book. Which is what I told myself when I spent months and months and months world building. But I won't be too hard on myself because if you look up reviews of Aletheia, there is one praise that you will see over and over again. And that is the world building. So, you know, don't world build forever, but if you go over for a couple months, you know, it doesn't hurt that much. But this video is not about the argument of how much time should be spent on world building because I cannot be trusted with that type of power. We're gonna be covering the basics. Because before I talk about the specifics of economics or magic systems or how to use evolutionary knowledge to create a truly unique species of flora or fauna for your alien planet and I really want to do that one and because of that I'm gonna put it off for months and months because I'm never gonna feel like I've done the script justice and so it's probably gonna be like a year before I do that specific video. But before I cover that stuff I need to talk about the basics. First things first is where are you gonna keep track of this stuff? Yeah, I know, not a super shiny question in the treasure trove that is this topic, but it's something that needs to be covered. So you have a couple different choices. My personal favorite right now, what I'm using is World Anvil. You could also just use Google Docs. You could use Trello, ooh. Yeah, those last three, I did videos on those. I also did a video on how to do a series Bible, which covers some alternate methods that I haven't experimented with yet. I'm just gonna throw all of those videos into a playlist and then I'll, I'll just put the, the link to the playlist down in the place, you know. But basically figure out what series Bible method you want to use from the get go. So you don't end up spending hours later transferring from whatever notepad sticky note type method you used to something more long term. And take it from me, books do not make good series bibles. They don't. They're full of all sorts of filler like character development and dialogue. And then you end up with this. That, that, can you, can you see it? I thought I'll remember all this stuff. And so then I had to reread Aletheia and highlight the hell out of every <laughs> freaking world building thing that I need to keep consistent for the rest of the series. And now I need to transfer all of this over to World Anvil and it has been less fun than it sounds and it already doesn't sound fun. And yes, I highlighted this copy of Aletheia. I know it hurts you, it's okay. It hurt me too for like the first two pages. And then after that, you just kind of accept the fact that the book is ruined and then it gets kind of fun. Next question, are you building your world from the inside out or the outside in? Basically, do you already have a premise or do you have an idea for a world but no plot to go along with it? If you already have a premise, it's a good idea to use that as a seed for your world. Think about what world building would most aid your plot. Would having religions and deities contribute to your theme? Does your main character's arc require them to be exposed to violence in their childhood where maybe having a war going on would be beneficial? Do you have a scene in mind that would take place during a festival? In an inside out method, you would think up a list of things that would best service your plot. And then you'd think up what worldly foundation and climate and history would have most likely led to the creation of these things that you need for your plot. And then you can fill in the blanks of whatever's left over. Alternately with the outside in method, you have a world idea, but not a plot one yet. 
So you're developing the world in the hopes that by digging into that world, you will eventually find a gem of a plot somewhere. Which will happen eventually, theoretically, probably. I don't know, I haven't tried it yet. But it's beneficial to know if you're using this method because that will help you decide how much time you're gonna give yourself for world building. If you already have a plot, unfortunately, you can't just let yourself world build for the rest of forever. You have to write eventually. I know, it hurts. It hurts me too, believe me. Also, if you already have a plot, you should only really be world building the things necessary to tell the story that you want to tell. There's no reason to name all of the countries on your freaking planet if your character's only gonna be in one of them. So I do recommend you try to come up with a plot idea before you start world building because if you don't, you do risk getting sucked in to the beautiful black hole that is a world building syndrome and then you're never gonna write a book. Next question, what's your foundation? So the first thing you need to decide, not the first thing, this is like the third thing I've covered. I don't know why I said first thing. What you need to decide next is what mood you wanna create. What feelings do you wanna invoke in your reader? Whimsical environments and upbeat cultures works for an upbeat type of story. If you have a darker book, that whimsical setting isn't gonna match with it. You also wanna consider off the bat what areas you want to differ most from our current world. Because you can't create a world 100% from the ground up because readers don't give us enough pages to do that. So for example, if you're writing a fantasy book with magical races and mystical creatures, you might wanna to stick to a 24 hour a day structure and 365 days a year calendar format. Whereas if you wanna write a story where it's always nighttime, you might wanna to stick to a more familiar government method like monarchy or whatever other systems of government there are. So choose what aspects can be left familiar without harming the story you want to tell. Now to the meat of the world building, the categories of things you need to figure out. And most of these can be broken down into entire videos, but I'm gonna touch on them briefly in this video so you know what to look out for, and more importantly, so you know what content to demand from me. Cause you guys are gonna be helping me choose which things to cover first. Yeah, that's how I'm managing this channel going forward. I'm gonna make you guys do the work. First things first, geography. If you're starting from scratch especially, geography is a perfect place to start because it will be the greatest influencer of your world. What's the landscape like? Is it mountainous? Is it flat? Is it a desert? Is it a tundra? <laughs> I wrote dessert, not desert. Don't have your setting be a dessert. I don't think you can pull that off. What's the climate? Is it cold? Is it hot? Is it dry? Is it rainy? Keeping in mind that the landscape will affect these. Also, where is your water source? Are there bogs, rivers, ocean? How is water transported? Is it clean? Water availability affects more than you would think. And what's the general layout of your world? Take a pen and paper, forgive yourself for your horrible artistic abilities, and just scratch out a rough drawing of kind of where the continents are. This is of course assuming it's not taking place on Earth, but if it's like an alien planet, you're gonna kinda wanna know at least where the land masses are. Or maybe at least the territory border of the country in which your story is gonna be taking place. Next up, society. Language, jargon, curses, swear words. Those two are the same. Sayings, naming conventions. What are the gender norms or other societal, societal norms? Maybe in your world it's really freaking hot, so the women in your world wear their hair short because they don't have whatever past history influence led to why ever the hell women in current day have long hair. What about economy? Imports and exports, not super important, but you're gonna wanna figure out what your currency is. Is there poverty? Keeping in mind all of these things are affected by the resources available in your area, including what currency is used. For example, Dogecoin has value because there are only 120 billion, 882 million, 825,122 hundred Doge in the world. Why are there only 120 billion, 882 million, 825,122 Doge in the world? Hell if I know, but Dogecoin is only worth 0 0.0026 cents each, whereas Bitcoin is currently worth 10,386. So clearly the Bitmines have more Doges than standard Bitcoin in them. Could I have used a more relatable gold comparison here? Yes, yes I could have. Next up, what resources are abundant? What resources are rare? This matters because again, if there were less Dogecoin, they would be worth more, probably. I don't know how Bitcoin works. 
but this would also affect things like our next list item, which is architecture. If your setting is in the desert, your houses won't be made out of wood, and if they are, you need to think about where that wood came from. Wood doesn't just pop up out of nowhere, and I feel like there's a sex joke in there, but I don't know how to finish it. <laughs> Carpenter joke. Humor at its finest. Next up, laws, government, politics. What about social classes, power balances, education? Does the average person in your world end up with 11 million Dogecoin in college debt, like in the US? How do your people tell time? What's the average year length? Are there other lands? What are their relations to each other? Next up, culture. What are their myths and superstitions? What about traditions? Customs? Do they have religions? Are there deities? Do they pray to the stars? Is there a god of time management? Because if there is, I would like to pray to them or make a sacrifice to them or something. Are there festivals, ceremonies, holidays? What food do they eat? What do they drink? And more importantly, are any of those foods or drinks worthy of the resurrection of savory stories? What about ethics? What is their view of right or wrong? What about entertainment? Are they the type of people who like to watch 24 children thrown into an arena to fight to the death? Or are they more the type of people that like to watch 100 adults thrown into an arena to fight to the death? Tough choices there. Next up, people. What are their standard physical appearances like? What is the style of clothing? In a super post-apocalyptic world, you can make use of leftover scrap metal, as we see in Horizon Zero Dawn, which by the way is an excellent example of abundant resources being used to influence culture and clothing. What are the races that one might find on this world? Are there any common deformities? What about body mods like tattoos, piercings, cyborg enhancement, tails? You know you've thought about it, don't you try to pretend. Next up, you're gonna wanna think about history. Depending on your story, this can range from mildly important to essential. Genres like dystopian and post-apocalyptic, history tends to matter a lot more because we wanna know how we got from our current position in society to this mess of a world. So some things that you might need to consider are epidemics and pandemics. What about wars? especially more recent ones still influencing the culture of your world. What about famous power shifts, natural disasters, famines and plagues? Also keep in mind that unless you're writing far future sci-fi, generally history will not be well documented. We know so little about the 1500s of France that some people mistake rain as being historically accurate. Though admittedly that may also have to do with how little attention we paid in history class. But look up some history and look at how many gaps there are in it. Not a lot of details survived, and how many details survived is of course going to depend on how historical events were documented at that time. So if your world has books and paper, or if they write everything on stone slabs, or if it's all word of mouth, if it's word of mouth, it's gonna end up like a really messed up version of telephone and your history is gonna be all tied up in knots. What about magic? That's a fun topic. What are the limiting factors of magic in your world? What is it sourced from? Can it be learned or is it genetic? How does society view magic? Does it influence health or healing? Is it soft? Is it hard? Are items required like amulets or wands or the blessing of the local cat? Next item of importance, science and tech. What are your people's level of understanding of science? What's used for communication, transportation, weaponization, all of the other Asians that you need. What's the availability? Is it something that only the rich get access to? Or is it more openly available? Who's creating it? Is it something that's just leftover relics from a long pre-apocalypse world? Or is it something that's being currently manufactured? What powers the tech? Is it magic? Is it science? Is it electricity? You know, cause Electricity, that doesn't fall into the category of magic or science, apparently. Keep in mind also that a magic world doesn't have to exist without science or tech. You can marry the two, and it's very interesting when done properly. And last but not least, biology. Yes, I made this a category. I'm just trying to ease the pain of those 11 million dogecoin college debt for a degree that I don't currently use. But you're gonna wanna take biology into account, especially if you're working with an alien world or a world with vastly different geography from our current world. 
For example, what size are the creatures in your world? If they're massive, they'll need to consume more. For plants, this will mean bigger leaves, bigger surface area on leaves, more layering to leaves. Another leafy things. Is gravity on your planet lighter? Is your planet almost entirely covered in water? These things, unless they're very recent developments in the history of that planet, will vastly affect what kind of animals you're gonna have available. And consider ecological balance. If you want a setting where birds are everywhere, then you're gonna need to account for what those birds eat. That means that you're gonna need to have more nature everywhere or more bugs, or maybe your birds eat people because Birds are freaking terrifying, so that's a plot conflict you could have. Like, look at those evil demon beaks. Unlike my soft, adorable cats, they're completely not dangerous. It's not like they're built with tiny daggers in their hands. And as you can tell, there is a lot to unpack and explore. And most of these topics deserve a much deeper dive, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. Some I've already covered, like curse words, birth control in post-apocalypse and dystopia, birth control and fantasy, both of which are demonetized. But there's tons of these topics which I haven't covered. Help me decide what to do next. Comments down below. Aletheia, dark, new adult, post-apocalyptic, hardcover paperback you know the drill thank you guys so much for watching and as always i will see you in the next video